Hi everyone, happy December 3rd. Thank you so much for joining me again today and following along on my double advent calendar unveilings. Smokey and Pearl are wandering around here, so they'll probably make another appearance today. Um, you can probably hear it in my voice, I've got a terrible head cold, so apologies if my audio is a bit wonky sounding or muffled. Um, that also probably explains why I look so tired and the fact that the third short story from the advent calendar matches my skin tone perfectly, uh, sadly, sadly, but true. So um, let's begin by opening up my Purdy's chocolate advent calendar. Ooh, isn't this so nice with the fire in the background? It's nighttime, as you can probably tell. Perfect time to eat chocolate, although that's any time of day for me. Uh, I think this is the third one. Let's see what's in here. Another little foil covered delicious treat. I think this is the same one that I got on the first day. And if I'm correct, this is truly delicious because it has a little cream filled treat inside. So have that to look forward to after I film this. And let's talk about the short story that I finished reading today. So this one was called Lady with Invisible Dog by Christopher Boucher. And according to the bio on the back, he uh, lives in the Boston area and teaches, teaches writing and literature at Boston College. He's also written a few novels, um, so clearly an American author. I've never heard of him before. But this book is really fun. I Sorry, short story. This short story was really fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's about a woman who has an invisible dog, although she's somewhat of a minor character. The story centers on a young man named Edwin who owns a bookshop, and the bookshop is kind of odd because it carries things that aren't it carries books that aren't typical books. Um, they're books that he creates himself out of strange materials like bread and steel, which kind of goes with the theme of the entire story. You know, it's it's rooted in reality, but um, it takes place in, I would say, a similar but fantastical world compared to ours. So, for instance, it has things like invisible dogs in it, which are apparently commonplace. Um, and the reason we can even see or know that these dogs are invisible is that we can see, you know, their leashes being trailed around. And we can feel them touch us or we can see them go to the bathroom. <laughs> but we can't... We can see what's coming out of them, but we can't actually see them. So there's some really like alternative aspects to this universe that the author draws for us but it's really fun and kind of tongue-in-cheek as well there's a character called the narrator who just can say things out loud and they can happen so um it's it was a fun story as i said a little bit lighter than yesterday's <laughs> which was about uh war as i had mentioned before and what I really liked about this story was that it features a character who owns a bookstore. And of course, being a book lover, I love reading books about books, even though the books themselves are a bit strange and not really the point of the story. There's also a really cute line in it that mentions that um, people are apologizing a lot more now. <laughs> um, and so there's this like department of, of the government that just deals with filing formal apologies, which I thought was great, especially being Canadian. And um, as you can see in part of the story there, the beginning of each paragraph has like an underlined um, sentence or phrase. And being the mystery lover that I am, I thought, oh, Th there's some sort of clue or something that the author is giving us about the, the story in its entirety. So I should just read those phrases on their own and see if I can figure out what he's saying to us. I did that. And aside from, you know, creating a somewhat smaller and simpler story, I didn't come up with any groundbreaking um, revelations. You know, maybe have to I have to read it a second time to do that. But um, it is just kind of an interesting little stylistic part of this story and you know maybe if I spend more time on it I'll be able to figure out what it actually means but that's what's so great about short stories is that they can include these tiny little um, nods to something 
kind of higher than itself and because it's in such a short form it doesn't get old for the reader and it's something that keeps us thinking long after we finish the few pages of the story makes up so another great story from the short story advent calendar really looking forward to day four tomorrow so i guess i will speak with you on december 4th have a good night <laughs>